and in your exams. So please follow this and any questions you can answer me. Okay, so I'll share my screen video. Okay, I'll get a case for you, that video on incisional hernia. Okay, here it is. Okay, so now we come to the second case presentation. The history of the patient is as follows. The patient is a 54-year-old woman who complains of a swelling on the left side of the abdomen for the past one year. Okay, so the details or the important facts in, or the, in the history have been highlighted in blue, which will be summarized in the next slide. Now we come to the analysis of the symptoms of the patient. 54-year-old female, Swelling on the left side of the abdomen, progressive for one year, recently increasing in size, swelling disappears when she lies down, and prominent when she coughed or lift, lifted something heavy. The bloating and distension of the abdomen over the last one month, and it's significant that she had got three caesarean section in the early 90s and two laparoscopic surgery in the late 90s. So the clinical problem of this patient is a 54-year-old female with multiple laparotomies and progressive swelling left side of the abdomen for a year with bloating and distension. So the possible causes at this stage from the history will be addition calling an incisional hernia. Others include pancreatic cysts of tumor, gastric cancer, colonic cancer, or an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Now we come to the questions. Question number one. Highlight the significant points in the history. Okay, these are the significant points. Eh? 54 year old woman, swelling left side of the abdomen, bloating and distension, swelling increase in size, and this swelling disappears when she lies down. Huh? This is very important and become prominent when she cough or lifted something heavy. And it's also important that she has got three past caesarean sections and, a lapros and two laparoscopic surgeries. What is the significance of repeated lower section caesarean section in this patient? Okay, repeated surgery or laparotomies, as in this case, caesarean sections, weakens the abdominal wall muscles, thereby predisposes to the development of incisional hernia. What is the most likely cause of the patient's problem based on her history? Most probably, she has got incisional hernia with adhesions, vowel adhesions. What are the predisposing factors? Okay, obesity, post-op wound infection, and post-op wound breakdown, technical, uh, technical inadequacies during surgery, poor technique, poor sutures, chronic illness, and trauma to the abdominal wall. Next, we come to the examination of this patient. Again, the important signs have been highlighted in blue in this case, which will be summarized in the next slide. Patient is obese. And from the analysis of signs, we notice that the patient is obese. There's a long midline scar, about 8 to 10 centimeters from suprapubic right until the umbilicus. Abdomen was slightly full. 
there is a mass 6 by 6 cm at the left peri umbilical region. Cough impulse was positive. There is a non pulsatile, reducible, soft, and non sanded swelling, partly reducible, slightly tender, and a gap is probable in the upper rectal sheath. So the clinical problem from after the examination is a laparotomy scar with a mass, reducible and slight tenderness and there's a gap felt in the rectal sheath. So the possible diagnosis in this case will be an incisional hernia with addition colic and bowel obstruction as probable causes. However, pancreatic cyst or tumour cannot be still ruled out. Now we come to the questions after the examination. What are the significant signs in this patient? Okay, this has already been mentioned. Abdominal scar, abdomen slightly full, mass, left parabolical area, positive copy pulse, partly reducible and slightly tender and a cap felt in the rectal sheath. What is this palpable gap in the midline scar and what is the cause? It is a defect in the rectal sheath due to breakdown after the previous operations. What is the definitive treatment for the patient? Surgical repair is a direct repair, kill repair or Mayo's repair and nowadays more commonly is the mesh repair which is important. The procedures can be done either open or through the laparoscopy. There's also a place for conservative uh, treatment to reduce weight, exercises to strengthen the abdominal muscles and the wearing of supportive abdominal belt. Now we come to some general questions on incisional hernia. What are the differential diagnoses of a mass in the abdomen left of the umbilicus? Okay. This is abdomen here. There's a mass, large midline scar, pushing the umbilicus slightly to the opposite side, to the right side, and then there's a mass here, large mass with some skin discoloration over it, measuring maybe about four by five centimeters in diameter. The differential diagnosis will be an incisional hernia, abdominal aortic aneurysm, pancreatic cyst or tumor, colonic carcinoma, or a mesenteric cyst. What imaging investigations would you ask for in such a patient? Okay, commonly yeah. abdominal x-ray, ultrasound, and CT scan. If necessary, we can proceed on to do an endoscopy, such as an upper endoscopy or a colonoscopy and barium meal studies if necessary. Question number three. The following is an ultrasound image of a woman with a large paraumbilical swelling. What is your diagnosis? Okay, this is an ultra ultrasound picture. It shows this is a rectal sheet. There is a gap or defect in the rectal sheet. And there's some herniation of bowel from the abdominal cavity into the extra peritoneal space here. With this uh, air filled uh, loops of bowel here. So this is a ventral incisional hernia. What are the complications of uh, this hernia? Addition colic, intestinal obstruction leading to strangulation, gangrene, and even perforation of the bowel with peritonitis and septicemia. These are very serious complications of uh, strangulated incisional hernias. The clinical signs of these complications are pain, abdominal distension, vomiting, 
constipation, no stools or flatter spas, severe tenderness all over, especially localized tenderness over the area of strangulation, increased bowel sounds in the early stages, and later when peritonitis sets in, the bowel sounds will be absent. And finally, if the patient goes into septicemic shock, which is a very serious complication with high mortality. Question number five. What advice will you give the patient after the surgical repair? Okay, these are the five areas you should uh, look into. Patient's nutritional support. Make sure the patient gets enough nutrition, adequate balanced nutrition to build up to heal the wound. Early mobilization to prevent complications, especially in obese patients, complications of uh, deep vein thrombosis. Abdominal support is very important. This, these things can be bought commercially in the pharmacies. Avoiding of uh, lifting heavy objects is very important, especially for a period of six months after this operation in this patient and reduce weight if obese. This patient is slightly obese and strongly should advise her to reduce weight and exercise her to strengthen the abdominal muscles. The surgery involves is direct repair, kill repair, Mayo's repair, which is called double breasting or overlay repair, mesh repair, which can be overlay or underlay mesh repair, and there's also must be prepared that surgery to proceed with release of additions, even resection of the bowel if there is evidence of strangulation. Okay, this uh, slide shows you the types of treatment. Conservative treatment for incisional hernia, when the neck of the hernia is wide and the hernia is small, so the strangulation risk is very small. And when there are no or minimal symptoms, then this patient should be treated conservatively, encourage exercise, diet, and also to strengthening exercises and the wearing of an abdominal belt. Surgery is indicated when the, it is, uh, the risk for strangulation is high, as in case of large hernias with narrow neck, rapidly increasing size of the hernia, and signs of obstruction and strangulation. The mesh repair is the most commonly done these days. Okay, putting a mesh below the rector sheet here. This is the rector sheet. Cover the defect here. Okay, or there are a number of times there's the Mayo's operation where it's a double breasting, eh? double breasting of the of the rector sheet, and mesh repair which can be above or below, overlay or underlay. Okay, mesh repair, sublay or underlay or overlay. Okay, this is the mesh here. This is the overlay mesh. This is the sublay or underlay mesh here. Basically, this is a hernia. Okay, the loop of hernia bowel comes trapped into the sac here. So this has to be reduced and then a mesh place and the wound close. Okay, these are incisional hernias. There is some evidence of strangulation, which is not so good. Here, the skin is not so nice. Probably here is okay. If it is reducible, you can treat symptomatically if the patient refuses, uh, until the patient uh, is not responding to your treatment. Here we come to the end of uh, today's topic. Thank you so much for your patience and support. So this is the short presentation of a clinical case of incisional hernia, which is a very common problem that we see in our surgical cases. The important thing is to detect complications of the hernia, such as obstruction and strangulation, leading to more serious complications of strangulation and perforation. The important thing is this is a chronic problem 
and you, you, the treatment is basically conservative, reducing weight, diet, taking uh, fiber diet, and stop becoming constipated. So with this, the patient will be more comfortable for a long time before the complications, if ever they come in, uh, make a comeback. So, and the important thing is to diagnose the condition when it becomes uh, complicated, such as strangulation or obstruction. The main uh, symptom of the patient will be a sudden change in the nature of pain. Suddenly, the abdomen becomes distended, various pain associated with vomiting, and uh, unable to pass tools of latest. So when this comes, a quick surgery is usually recommended and most of the time patients recover and the problem is recurrence. So I hope you appreciate these problems. Thank you for joining me and hope to see you again in another session.